I'm a huge history buff, so when I went to Charleston, South Carolina, the trip would not have been complete unless I visited the famous Fort Sumner. I made sure that I was able to take the long boat ride to get there, but I was surprised by what I found. Charleston, South Carolina is a beautiful city brimming with rich history, some of it good and some of it bad when you look back at slavery and its scars that crossed history. But the city also played a role in helping form our country. So as I said, I had to make the trip to Fort Sumner when I was there. You have to cross a large inlet to get to the fort, which takes close to 45 minutes. It was a pleasant trip and I got to take in even more of the coastline of the city and the area. When I arrived, we filed into the fort so we could take in much of the structure of the fort and the damage it had taken during the many battles that it was involved with during the Civil War. The fort was built to protect the city from the British during the Revolutionary War and was instrumental in keeping the city safe. I wandered around the fort with the other many tourists checking out the Civil War cannons and listening to the state park rangers give a brief history of the fort. I was about to go off by myself and really take in the place when I looked ahead of me and suddenly I could smell gunpowder and I could almost hear the rumble of cannons. Then I saw a figure standing many feet ahead of me and I noticed they were in full military costume from the Civil War. I thought that was weird because the park rangers weren't in any kind of costumes and nobody else was wearing any costumes either. Then I saw the man turn toward me and he looked at me imploringly as if asking for help. I wasn't sure what to do and he kept looking at me, asking for my assistance. I turned to the person I was with on the tour and called out to them and asked, do you see this? But they were too busy taking photographs and I looked back at the uniformed man and he continued to look at me and I could feel his pain and anguish. I, I quickly turned back to the person I was with again and I said, hey, do you see this? And when I turned back, the man was gone. This shook me to my core because I don't believe in spirits or ghosts, but I had no other explanation because there was no place in the brief second that I was looking away for the man to have gone. My friend walked up to me and said, what's up? And they could see I was a little shaken. I said, I'm not sure, but I think I just saw a ghost. I went on to explain what had happened and they were more in tune with the idea of spirits and they said it was quite possible. Once I returned to my hotel room, I did a little research on the internet and found out about a man named Daniel Howe, who was supposedly very famous for being stationed at the fort and it is said he still roams the grounds trying to protect it. I learned that he died on the fort, which explained why his spirit still roams the grounds attempting to protect those hallowed grounds. Even to this day, this whole experience changed my viewpoint on the spirit world, and now I think about the soldier who was stationed at Fort Sumner for eternity. I decided to visit Charleston, South Carolina on vacation and ended up staying in an Airbnb just outside of town. It was in a neighborhood that was right up against one of the local waterways known as the Wapo Creek. The Airbnb was very quaint. It had all you would need, a living room, galley kitchen, and bathroom. I ended up wandering around Charleston, taking in the sights and learning about the history of the area. Eventually, I returned to my Airbnb, looking to get a good night's sleep before returning to exploring the next day. Being in a new place, sometimes I don't sleep really well, so I woke up early 
and the tours I had planned didn't start for a couple hours. So I decided to explore the neighborhood around my Airbnb. It was a very misty morning and I stepped out into the cool morning air. I walked out to the edge of the creek and took in the calming waters. There were lots of cattails and several docks around for boating and sightseeing. After that, I headed down the street past many of the well-kept homes and ended up on a semi-busy road, so occasionally I had to dodge cars as I walked. As I moved along, I looked out over a wide stretch of wetlands, or it Maybe it was a swamp. I began to get an uneasy feeling, and I swear I could hear things moving in the reeds in the wetland. But when I would glance around, I would never see anything. I continued my walk, but kept my eye out for any possible movement in the swamp. I'd heard rumors about alligators and other such critters, but I didn't believe anything like that could happen so close to a major city. I was about as far as I wanted to go, and I stopped to take one final look at the wetlands. And then I heard something. It was kind of a whispering or moaning that was coming from the reeds. And I couldn't place it sent an overwhelming sense of foreboding through my entire body. I could not make my feet move, and I could feel the dampness from the swamp pouring into my bones. More sounds of movement came from the swamp. Something was moving through the water and snapping the reeds. The sounds were coming from all around me. I felt trapped in an overwhelming sense of doom filled my mind. Then, out of nowhere, a car blew by and honked its horn. I quickly spun and partially ran back to the safety of my Airbnb. I was covered in sweat as I hit the door and entered. After a few minutes to recover, I cooled off and then went back into the city for one of the tours. Later, I would learn that some escaped slaves would travel through the lowland areas and some were known to have drowned in the swamps locally. I wondered if that is what I heard and I felt was some ghost from the past either trying to find a way home or revenge on those who would enslave them. A chill ran down my spine and it took me right back to that swamp again. Charleston and Edgar Allan Poe have an undying link. He was stationed there as a young man He was in Battery H on Sullivan's Island in the 1st Regiment of the Artillery. His time in the military gave him discipline, which helped his writing. It is believed that he spent a lot of time in Charleston and met many people, which inspired his writings. The last thing that Poe would write would be a poem entitled Annabelle Lee, which was written two days before his death. It was a poem about the beauty of love and loss. It was inspired by his time in Charleston. It was many and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabel Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted, her and me. 
And this was the reason that long ago, in this kingdom by the sea, a wind blew out of a cloud, chilling my beautiful Annabel Lee, so that her high-born kinsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea. The angels, not half so happy in heaven, went envying her and me. Yes, that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabel Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we. And neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabel Lee. For the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabel Lee. And so all the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride in her sepulchre there by the sea, in her tomb by the sounding sea. It is believed that Annabel Lee is buried in the Charleston area. Some say they have seen a sailor weeping at a grave in one of the local cemeteries, but when they get closer, they find nobody is there. Could this be the ghost of Edgar Allan Poe? or some soldier who is trying to find his old love.